So I'm going to be sharing my business journey. Now I'm going to start with when I started my YouTube channel all the way through to where I am today and I'll have the time codes in the description box below for you as well as any websites I mention I'll have them linked as well or I'll pop them up on the screen somewhere. So let's begin with the beginning. <laughs> let's begin at the beginning and I'll tell you how I went from starting a YouTube channel to then going on Etsy and then how I transitioned to Squarespace and then how I started getting my products made um, without having any illustration skills or without being able to draw. So let's begin. So I started my YouTube channel around five years ago now and I didn't start out knowing that I wanted to have a stationary store. It wasn't until a few years after that I started that I actually decided to go on Etsy and sell some stationary bundles. So these bundles were called stationary mystery packages and basically what I did was I collected stationary from all over the world and I had these re really cool bundles of stationary. I packaged them all together and they sold out pretty much instantly. So I thought this is awesome, I could start a business doing this. I love stationary and I wanted to share that with the world. So I made a few more stationary mystery packages. I saw them on Etsy, but once I finished selling those packages, I thought I would go into other things and make like vintage bundles and things like that and stamps, but my products didn't really get across the way that I wanted to on Etsy. I didn't really make a brand and I really wanted to have a space where I could build my own brand up because I don't just have a shop, I have a YouTube channel and Instagram, Patreon and I wanted to be like a one-stop shop where everyone can go to one place and they can read my about page, read my blog posts and things like that. And I wanted to make sure that I knew where my traffic was coming from at all times because on Etsy you can get people from all different places and Etsy is a great because they actually promote your products for you because Etsy in itself is a great platform um, because people go to Etsy to buy things like that but I really wanted to know how I was marketing how my campaigns were working and things like that so that's why I wanted to have a a website where I could track all that basically and I could really make a brand where on Etsy I didn't feel like I could do that as much but a lot of people still have Etsy these days. you just got to remember that if you go on Etsy, some people will say, I bought it from Etsy rather than I bought it from your shop. So there's lots of pros and cons on the internet. I just decided to get off Etsy and start a website. Now, I started a Squarespace account um, probably last six months. I've been running it properly. And I first started out by making mood boards on Pinterest. So Pinterest is always my go-to to figure out how to um, design and brand things. So I did a lot, I signed up for a lot of those like how to brand <laughs> um, your business and you can get lots of free printables on Pinterest so it's really great. And I picked my colour palettes, I made an about page and the biggest thing you've got to remember if you're going to open a Squarespace account is that you've got to be tech savvy you've you unless you're hiring someone to make that website for you you're going to be watching a lot of youtube videos like how to do this and um it took me a long time to actually build that website up so once you're like once you get the feel of squarespace it's quite easy but to begin with there's a lot of things that you will have to do when you're building your e-commerce shop so once it was all built up, I needed products. So I wanted to continue making mystery stationery packages and I got some products here and there like I did a collected to begin with, but I also wanted to support small businesses. So I actually reached, reached out to local artists and wholesaled from them. The biggest thing about wholesaling though is once people discover the brand, so I always made sure that I had designed by, illustrated by, and an artist page for people to know what kind of products they're buying off what um, artists, um, because I didn't want to just call it my own. I didn't want it to be Brittany McCowan's products. I wanted to actually um, respect that, that someone has built their own brand. So I was always making sure I was referencing to their products if I was posting it on YouTube or Instagram and things like that. Um, but if you do that, you're then bringing traffic to their businesses, which is great if you're starting out. But 
you're not drawing people into your shop. You need something unique for people to come to your own shop. And by wholesaling, because it's still online, why would someone pick my shop over the original artist? So unless you've got something unique and different for people to come to your store, um, then yeah, wholesaling just didn't really work out. It was great to get started and I loved the products from the illustrators and a lot of other people did and they liked that I was sharing work from local illustrators, but long term it just wasn't going to work out. So that's when I thought I need to do something new and I wanted to make my own stationery, but <laughs> I can't draw. <laughs> so I've tried to learn all of the drawing techniques and Illustrator and um, Procreate or all of those online tools that you can actually make your own stationery and make your own designs, I should say but I just can't draw. I've tried so many times and I know that an illustrator can do it so much better than me. So, um, after like months and months and months of figuring out how I was gonna do it and trying to learn my own way of designing, I decided just to jump online and find an illustrator and find someone who was at a price range that I could afford because the biggest thing for me now is I needed to work out is the cost of an illustrator actually, am I going to get enough profit margin selling the products after getting them made and adding everything else onto that. So when you are getting an illustrator, you've got to remember that you're not only paying for an illustrating cost of the artist, you're also paying for the product, so how much it make like how much money it takes to make that product. So you've got to remember illustrating costs the product cost and then you've also got to remember packaging. Now packaging is not just the, because I use tissue paper um, that's branded packaging, it's things like the labels, the return addresses, the mailing, um, the bags that you mail things in, the cost it takes to ship things. So there's a lot of extra costs and you've also got to remember that you're paying also for your website you're paying, if you're doing any advertising, you're paying for that. Um, I got like stamps made, I paid for those. I got business cards made. So these are all things that do add up and you've got to remember that you need to really write all these costs down to see if you're actually making a profit. Because at the end of the day, if you make your own stationery and you're not the designer doing it, that you might not be in a profit margin. <laughs> So I had to figure out how to get into a profit margin and basically I needed to figure out what the products were going to cost and plus the illustrator fees as well as um, all the extras that come on to running a small business. Now for me I'm lucky because I don't just have an online store, I've also got my Patreon, my AdSense from YouTube and also a few brand deals here and there. So my um, income doesn't just come from one thing so if you're just opening a shop you've got to remember that it might be slow at the start until you start getting your community and customers built up so that's another thing we'll go into but i'll run you through the the how i actually got everything going with an illustrator so before I actually got online and started researching illustrators, I actually decided that I wanted to focus on the designs first and figure out what kind of designs I wanted an illustrator to illustrate. So I went onto Canva and Canva is a brilliant website for anyone who is like an amateur designer like me. And I use Canva for all my thumbnails and things for Instagram as well. So I went on that website and actually made mood boards of what I wanted my stationary products to look like. And I went into a lot of detail. So I described things very specifically. I found lots and lots and lots of reference images for like every piece of the stationary design. So when I actually got an illustrator, I could give them like pretty much a PDF of five pages of what these designs will look like. Now, once I got online, I went to two websites to find my illustrator. I went on Fiverr. So I'll have that linked in the description box below. It's a fantastic website for finding pretty much any services you want outsourced um, for your small business. So Five will have services for illustrators, animators, um, website designers, anything to do with marketing, 
you can pretty much find someone to do a job for you. So I went on Fiverr and I searched illustrators and I also went on Instagram as well. Now, if an illustrator had an Instagram, it was even better because then I could see what stage of their journey they're at basically. I didn't want to hire someone who didn't speak English well because I wanted to communicate with my illustrator um, in detail about what I wanted. I didn't want a communication back um, breakdown and I didn't want anyone who's just starting out because I had a very specific idea in mind of what my designs were going to look like and I also didn't want to find someone on Instagram who also had like hundreds of thousands of followers because I knew that someone like that who's building up a brand may not have the time to put to their um, commission work so I also knew that they were probably out of my price range as well so I wanted someone around mid-range um, for my budget and I wanted someone who was established but didn't have a massive online presence. So that's when I started looking and I found my illustrator. I have a section on my website where I actually have a little bio of her um, and I also credit her in pretty much all of the stationary items on my shop. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not a secret who my illustrator is, um, but I would highly recommend you find someone who matches the style that you're looking for. Um, be very specific on who you choose and what budget you have. Like I said, even with the illustration cost, you've got to remember all the other costs that come about when you're starting up your shop or when you're starting to make your own stationary products. So another thing I haven't mentioned yet is how I actually make my own stickers using the illustrations um, come from the illustrator. So I actually have to go on Photoshop and I need to take the background off away and make it transparent and I need to put a white border around so that Cricut can recognize it when it's cutting the stickers. So I'll run you through that process if you guys want to know because it's, it's actually very easy but when I googled it, it took me a long time to figure it out. So I'll run you through that process now just in case you want to know how to actually make your stickers once you've got your illustrations. So once you've got the illustrations from the Illustrator, what you'll need to do is open up Adobe Photoshop to put a white border around it in order to cut your stickers out. So once you've got Adobe Photoshop open, you'll click this open button, you'll select the sticker that you want to work with, press open, and then what I'm just going to do is grab this magic wand tool, I just right clicked on it. I'm going to click it on the background and I'm going to select and mask. Now you need to invert it so it just picks up the middle image and not the background. And then go new layer. Click OK. And then I'll need to actually make this image smaller in order to put the white background around it. And then I'm going to actually delete the background layer so when I export it I will just be working with this image. I'm going to go down here to FX, click stroke, and then I'm just going to see how big I want this stroke to be around it. And then your um, cutting machine will cut around the white line, so you'll have a white line around your image. I'm going to click OK because that looks good. And then all I'll need to do is just go up here and then um, export or even save as is the easiest. Save on your computer. You're not going to save it as a Photoshop format, you'll save it as a JPEG or a PNG. And then I'm just going to call it sticker 3. Let's go 4 in case I've already got a sticker 3. And then I'm going to click save and then OK. And then if I open up my stickers, it should come up with that white border around the edge. There you go, with a transparent background. Alrighty, so I've told you the story of going from Etsy to Squarespace, from then selling wholesale items to getting my own designer, um, illustrator I should say, because I'm the designer, and then I had to work out shipping and packaging and 
um, printing. So we'll start off with printing. Now I do have a Cricut machine and I wanted to make my own sticker sheets but I couldn't find a cheap enough sticker paper to print them myself. So the printer that I actually, like the company that prints my sticker sheets um, can print them cheaper than me making them. So I decided just to go with them, save all the hassle, but to make my own die cut stickers it was cheaper for me to get the paper myself and cut them out because companies that make die cut stickers cost a lot more than just making them yourself and I was getting it from an international company, I couldn't find one in Australia and um, the shipping cost was just ridiculous so the printing cost wasn't that bad but then shipping on top of it just made it ridiculous, I could do it myself cheaper so I found my sticker paper on at, um, eBay so I definitely recommend you check out eBay if you're looking for sticker paper Officeworks and other companies in Australia are just too expensive the United States has amazing sticker sheets that you can find so I can recommend that you Google sticker paper from online business in the United States but they only ship their sticker paper to the United States so can't do it here in Australia. Also in Australia it's ridiculous because our shipping prices are just so high so if you're going to be um, running your business in uh, like Europe or America or other countries it will be better if your customers come from your country because your shipping prices are going to be lower so just remember to work out all your shipping prices because when I first started I actually had washi tape and because I was sending out washi tape and heavier items I was charging a lot less for my shipping than they actually cost so I was losing money so just remember to always make sure that if you are starting your own e-commerce shop you've got your shipping down pat because you can lose a lot of money on shipping if you don't do it correctly and also just finding good mailing bags um, because a lot of the um, envelopes I was using where I, the padding was actually heavy and added on to the shipping and also some of the envelopes I used in the very beginning ripped a lot in the mail and it just wasn't nice to receive an envelope that was a bit teared up from posting internationally basically. I have spoken a lot in this video today. I feel like I've been talking for ages so I hope you guys got a lot of information out of this video. Please let me know in the comments if it helped. Um, share your story, I'd love to hear it if you're starting out or if you are have a business and you just got a few extra tips from this one, I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!